Hello and welcome to Tutorials Point. My name is Faz and we are continuing our CSS series. And in this video, we are going to learn about CSS Flexbox from complete scratch. So without wasting time, let's get started. So I've already written some HTML code here. We have this parent div as you can see with the class of parent and then we have three divs or three children inside it as you can see here in the web browser as well. If we go to style.css, I have already written some pre-styling as you can see. Now, don't need to focus on it. The main thing is that we are going to learn about Flexbox. Now, by, by default, if we right click here and go to inspect, we go to Chrome Developer Tools. What we see is for all these boxes, be it the parent box, all these children dev boxes, as you can see by default, they have a display of block. That is why they are on top of each other, right? Now, what am I going to do is I'm going to give them a property. I'll write display flex. The first thing we done is display flex. And once I save this, as you can see, their position changes. Now here, once I use the display flex property, basically what happens is this parent container is called as the flex container now and the items inside it, or we can say these div box one, box two and box three, these items inside this flex container are called as flex items. Let me just quickly show you basically what happens when we use display flex. So I have, uh, I have the screenshot here so that I can show you. Once we apply the property of display flex, basically what what happens is that this whole container becomes the flex container and basically two invisible axes are created. First is this axis, it is in the horizontal direction and this one is called as main axis, okay? And second is the vertical axis that goes from something like this and this one is called the cross axis. Now basically display flex, what it does is it, it basically positions these uh, flex items along the main axis that is in the horizontal direction. So let's go back to browser. Now next up is the flex direction property. So here the flex direction, I'll write row. Now if I save it, nothing will happen because by default, the flex direction is always row. That means our elements are positioned along the row. All right, so the main axis is horizontal and the cross axis is vertical. But if I change this flex direction property to column and save it, as you can see, our elements or our child divs are basically displayed in vertical direction. Why is that? Because this time the main axis, which was horizontal is now vertical. All right. So I'll repeat the main axis becomes vertical and the cross axis becomes horizontal when we use the flex direction column property here. So I will just remove this and save it. As you can see, we are back to original. Now the next important property that we are going to talk about is the justify content. So I am going to write justify content and this is one of the important properties of Flexbox, why? Now if I write this justify content to center and I save it, as you can see, our uh, children or basically our children divs are centered and they are basically centered horizontally to be specific. Why is that? Because the justify content property controls the alignment of items on the main axis. And remember main axis is the one that is the horizontal in direction, right? So this is justify content. Another similar property is align items. Okay, so align items and I can set it to center as well. Now, if I save it, as you can see, our children divs are now centered vertically as well. So basically the align items property controls alignment of items on the cross or the vertical axis. Now, if I set to center, as you can see, our elements are centered horizontally as well as vertically. So this, uh, this also solves a very big question usually asked by developers all the time. That is how to center a div. And this is how you center a div as well. Just apply the Flexbox and then you just use the justify content center and align item center. Now here note, we cannot just give it one option or basically one value of center or center for this justify content or even align items. For example, the justify content, which will basically control our layout or our items layout for the horizontal direction. It cannot be only center. If you can see there are multiple options here, as you can see, it has multiple options, something like center and and many other flex and flex, flex start that we will talk about shortly. For example, if I select right and save it, as you can see, our items are aligned to the right of the container, right, horizontally. Similarly, for this one, there can be many things. If we write align items, as you can see, it says end. If I select the end option and save it, as you can see, our items are at the end of this container vertically. 
So that's how it works. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to remove these two properties and let's just focus on the fundamental once again. What if I set the flex direction to column? What will happen is the main axis will go vertical now and the cross axis will go horizontal now. So if I use the justify content property now and set it to center, you may say that it will align these child div items horizontally on the main axis. But remember since we used flex direction column the main axis is no longer horizontal the main axis is the vertical one so this justify content center has vertically aligned our child devs right and similarly the align items center will basically horizontally align our child devs so if i save it something like this okay now let me just delete this all of the three properties now next important thing is that you need to know that uh, for each of these child, so basically this box 1, box 2, box 3 that are our children new elements, they have a width of 150 pixels and a height of 150 pixels. Now something like here, what if we have multiple boxes, not only these three, what if we have let's say 6 boxes, if I save it as you can see the boxes fill up so that they can all be in the container and if we have more boxes, as you can see they are still trying to fill up and now they are out of this container. Now what to do in this situation? is we are going to use a property now this property is called as flex wrap now by default the flex wrap is set to no wrap so if I save it nothing happens as you can see but once I change this from no wrap to wrap what will happen is if I save it as you can see they basically change the line in order to fit into the container right so this is where a property like flex wrap set to wrap is used all right now once we use this flex wrap set to wrap we can use another property with it and that is called something like align content and it is different from align items now the align content is basically we can use it to align all of the elements on the cross axis for example if i write center and save it as you can see all of the boxes all of the children dev elements are in center if i write uh, something like end and save it and as as you can see all of them are towards the downward or basically towards the end of our parent flex container right so let me just delete it so let me just remove some of these boxes because it makes them look messy now on the next important thing is a property called gap in flexbox for example we have these three items and we want to have some gap between these items we can simply use the gap property and i can set it to any value any unit so we can say 20 pixels for example if i save it as you can see there is a gap of 20 pixels among these children flex elements right or items now these were some of the flex properties which are specifically for the parent element or we can say basically for the flex container now there are some various properties that are for the flex items or basically the child inside the flex container right um, i'm talking about these boxes so let me just delete these properties here and let me save it and we are back to where we were at the starting now one of the properties is the flex grow property now what does flex grow property do is basically flex grow controls how much a flex item can grow based on available space so if i go to index.html we have these classes given to these boxes box one box two and box three so let me just use it i'm going to target my box three and how to target using a class we are going to write period and the name of the class that is box 3 now here i'm going to use something called as flex grow now note that we have some available space here now if i set for this box 3 for this box right here if i set the flex grow to 1 it will take up the left or the available space there something like this all right we can similarly do something for the box 2 as well and for the box 1 as well next i'm going to talk about a property called as align self for example for this display flex here i'm going to write the align items property and set it to something like center if i save it as you can see our items are basically aligned on the cross axis right and the center but what if i want a particular children to be aligned in a different way for example for this box one i want it to be aligned to its original position that is here at the starting that is at the top left 
So what I'll do is I'm I am simply going to write here align self and I'll set this align self to something like normal, for example. And if I save it, as you can see, this item is back to its normal position. So these were some of the properties of CSS Flexbox. Now we have covered maximum of the properties of a CSS Flexbox. There may be a couple of more left, but don't worry, we will cover them once we make some projects and move on in this series. All right. So uh, that will be it for this video. Now in the next video of this series, we will create a small project and we will use all the CSS concepts we have learned so far. Maybe I'll introduce you to a couple of new concepts also. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one.